As you heard, the teachings of Jesus in today's gospel were quite confusing to the disciples. They were utterly astonished. They could not get it. Didn't make any sense. How is it that that guy wasn't doing it right? He was morally good. He had followed all the commandments. And he was rich. That's always been seen in the Old Testament as a sign of blessing that you are on the right track with God. You might recall if you ever read the book of Job that when Job lost everything and then got sick, all his friends showed up and tried to say, you did something wrong, Job. Clearly in your past, you committed a big sin and God's getting you back. So that was the thinking. And he's humble. He recognizes that he's missing something in his life. What more do I need to do? What do I have to do, Lord? What, what am I missing? He would be just like the perfect parishioner. Moral, rich, humble. Ah, I think any pastor would want a whole church full of these kind of folks. And then, but Jesus says, nope. You lack one thing. And that one thing made him walk away. Because Jesus pointed out what at least for him he was missing. So it unsettled the disciples. It's not how they think. And maybe it's not how we think. So perhaps we need to look at what happened there and see if we can make sense of it so that we are not unsettled by the story. First of all, the man encounters Jesus. And that leaves him kind of messed up. And that, we should know, is the normal thing when people are encountering the real Jesus. That the real Jesus always demands more of you than you think. And the real Jesus always gives you more than you ever thought possible. So if you're dealing with the real Jesus, prepare to be a bit unsettled by what he's asking of you. You want what of me? But what he promises, what he gives you, is so much more than you could ever ask for. So that's just the nature of Jesus. And we should not ever be surprised by that. Whenever we're encountering the real Jesus, it's going to leave us a bit like, wow, I never thought of it that way before. Or you want what? That's normal with Jesus. Secondly, um, there's a wrong view of Christianity, of following Jesus, that the young man has and that a lot of people still today have, and that is that Christianity is something you do. When they say, I'm a Christian, it's because it's, they do the right things. It's what I do. I do this. I go to this church, I do these things, so therefore, I'm a Christian. It is not about doing, not about being able to add one more thing. If I just do this, then I'll have peace. If I just do this, I'll, I'll be in a right relationship with God. If I just do this. No, Christianity's a relationship. It's a relationship between you and God. 
It's about who you are, not what you do. So the young man is being challenged to be in a relationship, and that's a whole lot more than he was expecting. You want what? All of you. I want all of you, young man. Not an hour, not a little bit of doing, all of you. It's a relationship. Just like any marriage or loving relationship, you think, I give you an hour a week, isn't that enough? Come on, what are you expecting of me? Would that be a good marriage? We wouldn't think so, no. We expect the same thing in those loving relationships, all of you. I want all of you. And that's what Jesus is asking of the young man. Jesus looks at him with love, as you heard in the gospel, and knows that he's actually breaking the first commandment. What is the first commandment? <laughs> you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. And this man loves something more than God. This man loves his stuff more than God. The stuff, his riches, whatever those riches are, are getting in the way. That's what he dreams about. That's where his focus is. And Jesus is asking him for his dreams. Give me you, all of you. It's the final prayer that Ignatius has people pray when they make the 30-day retreat. Take, Lord, receive all I have. Everything, memory, all, all of your life, all that you are, goes to God. And then, as Jesus promises in the gospel today, then you will have treasure in heaven. But here's probably... What we don't understand is what does that mean to have treasure in heaven? What are we, what, because we might, the young man might be saying, well, I don't know if the riches in heaven compare with the riches I have here on earth. Maybe my dreams here on earth are better than the dream that I will have in heaven. So what is treasure in heaven? As Jesus tells us in other places and, and throughout scripture, you hear this, the, the treasure is God himself. That you, your name, is tattooed on God's heart. That God holds you that close, that God loves you that much. That's the treasure. God is the treasure, not these little fantasies of the streets are paved with gold in heaven and there's a nice big house there for you. Hmm, why would you want that? You can have God. That's the treasure. Jesus looked at him with love. But the young man went away sad. 
And we should feel sad for him too because he's so close. So, so close. But what Jesus was asking of him was too much. He wanted his heart.